Hello. In this video, I will be showing you how one plan for Agile Portfolio Management works within Azure DevOps. Uh, so here, you'll see I'm logged into Azure DevOps, and we have a new tab over on the left-hand side called One Plan. I'm currently in the Portfolios module here, and on the right-hand side, you'll see a list of uh, active epics as well as proposed epics uh, within Azure DevOps. You'll also notice across the top that this is going across multiple team areas. Uh, so you can actually do one team project area or you can actually do multiple and pulling them in from the different team areas so you can get a consolidated portfolio in one view. Now how this works is you'll see here you can actually create a new epic here by clicking on new. Uh, we also have uh, scaled agile solutions for things like lean portfolio management where you can create portfolios, value streams, epics, features, user stories uh, right from here as well. But this one is a more standard uh, adaptive type of uh, configuration that I'll be walking with through with you today. So the first thing here by creating a new epic here, um, I'm going to go ahead and click on one of these and show that uh, the first thing you might want to do in here is uh, update some key metadata around this epic. So one of the things that OnePlan allows for you to do is ex extend Azure DevOps uh, to do things like possibly doing stage gating across the top here by buckets so you can control when these epics get moved to each one of these different stages. Uh, you might want to add an additional metadata like what portfolio program business unit this might be a part of, uh, who the executive sponsor might be, manager. Um, if you're adding timesheets, you can do timesheet controls. Uh, you can get a roll-up of key points and number of features. You can put a start and an end date target uh, on this particular epic. We're going to dive into the financials a little bit, but you can manage your financial plans and forecasts and actuals against this epic here in one plan. Uh, the amount of effort that's being applied. You can do your WSGIV planning here for prioritization. You can build a business case. You can control your overall health and indicators, and you can do status reporting uh, in here with as well. But in this scenario, what I want to do is talk a little bit more about if this is a brand new epic and we wanted to evaluate that, should we get this epic and should we prioritize this epic into um, to execution? Uh, the first thing you might want to do is put a resource plan against this epic to say, you know, these are the types of teams or individual resources we need to have on this epic. So quickly here you'll see um, at the top we already have Team C and Team D uh, already planned on this particular epic. And right now we're looking at a week forecast. But I'm going to go ahead and change this to a month, just to give us a little bit more range here. And now you'll see by month, uh, the, the allocation by team. So you'll see right now we're looking at percentage that we need Team C 90% on February, uh, almost 90% uh, here in March. So I'm going to go change that to 90, just kind of round it up. Uh, so you'll see that we need 75%, then 70%, and then 30% of Team D. Now I can come in here and add an additional resource if I wanted to, or, or, or an additional team as well. And if I wanted to see the conflicts here, I can actually open these up and see what other uh, epics these teams are assigned to as well. The next stage here is maybe you want to enter in your budget or your for or forecast here within the financial planner. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the financial planner. And you can simply import those teams or those resource allocations into your financial plan to give you your costs for your labor. Uh, but you can also come in here and enter non-labor costs as well. So maybe we need to uh, buy some additional software here. So I'm going to put in here $25,000 worth of software uh, in the month of April. So it's allowing me to roll this up and give me an estimate on this particular epic. It's going to cost us $225,650. Uh, as you start to move forward in execution, you can start to track and compare to your forecast as well as your actual so you can understand where you might be going off of your original plan with, within this epic itself. So now that we've got our details in for this particular epic, we've put in a high-level resource plan by teams, could be individuals. Uh, we've also done a high-level financial plan. Now what we'd want to do is go in and do some what-ifing to find out uh, does this epic uh, have high priority and can we do it within the resource and, and budget constraints. So I'm going to go ahead and come back here to the portfolio. And you'll see again we're looking at a list of all epics that are active as well as proposed. Uh, one of the nice things here is you can actually group these. So if you wanted to look at these epics by, for example, category, so if you wanted to see which epics are helping with the cloud computing category versus the business analytics versus application development, you can do that. If you wanted to look at maybe by business unit, so what business unit is going to be supporting each one of these, uh, maybe uh, as well as, uh, let's say, portfolio. And so you can see which portfolio or program uh, is, is supporting each one of these epics here. Uh, but for this demonstration, I'm going to go ahead and just jump over into the prioritization screen.
And as you can see here in the prioritization screen, uh, I'm looking at each one of these epics. I'm seeing which ones are active, which ones are proposed. Uh, if I scroll over to the right, I can see my WizGiv here. So I can sort my WizGiv here. I can also see what my ROI is looking for on each one of these epics. Um, and so I get a prioritization score based on that, or ranking based on that. But what if I need to rank these uh, manually, as some things are actually higher priority or things are forced in as needed? I can go ahead and click on the prioritization button here. And now you'll see I have my stack ranking score here on the left-hand side. So now I can come over and look across these different WizGivs and ROI fields. And I could actually move things that might be more important. For example, high ROI but low uh, WizGiv. I might want to move that particular uh, Fabricam Epic up. So I can actually grab that and say, I'm going to move that up. And I'll move that above, let's say, social networking. So now what I'm doing is basically stack ranking my prioritization of which Epics I want to do. And so you'll see some proposed Epics here that are higher ranking than some of the active ones. Uh, and so this allows you to stack rank that. Now you might want some additional information on when you're doing this prioritization of this is doing some what ifing. So one of the things you can do uh, with, with, with one plan is you can take and add in the resource plan that you just filled out uh, and do some what if scenarios uh, with that resource plan. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this date to this year so we can see the full picture. And you can see currently if we did all epics proposed and active, we're going to have some resource constraints across the teams as well as individuals. Uh, so now what we can do is we can do some what ifing. So now that I have my ranking here, I can actually kind of come down to the bottom here and start to uh, either kill active epics that are going on, or I can say these proposed ones, uh, what if we don't do those? They're no priority for us. They're adding, adding a lot of value. So let's go ahead and, and uncheck those. And you'll see that down here, I'm starting to see my resource plans uh, improve. I'm starting to get to a, a, a better place where I can know that I can get these other ones done without a lot of conflict with my resources. Uh, you also can not only um, do what ifing on saying deselect, des deselecting uh, epics, but I can also, because we have a timeline built in here, you can also uh, do some what ifing on moving things out. So for example, what if I want to move this um, VoIP phones project out to next year. I can do that by moving that out and you'll see it starts to change down below. What if I move this particular one out to next year as well? And so as I start to move these epics out, I'm doing kind of some what ifing of saying, hey, why don't we put this on hold? We can come back to this epic because it is important to us, but we'll come back to it next quarter or maybe we'll come back to it next year. Uh, but that allows you to do some what ifing there on your resource plans. You also can do the same thing with your financial plans. So if your epics, uh, are lined up here and you see below here you'll see your financials uh, schedule. I can also add in my target. So this is my financial target by month um, and as I showed here is you can see uh, you have some constraints of budget and as I was showing with the resources the same type of thing applies so I can simply say well we have the right resources now with the right availability but we just don't have the budget for it so I can actually start coming up here and start uh, killing some of these epics to find out where we can get it within budget constraint. I also can move these out again just as our example we showed earlier is what if we move these out to uh, the following year or following quarter how does that help with our budget planning here. So once you get your resources and your financials aligned, you can then start to save these scenarios off and start doing comparing these scenarios so you can bring back to management saying here's the best uh, collection of epics that we think we can go forward with and when we think we can go forward with them. The other thing you can do within one plan is you can take these epics and you can view it within a board. So for example, if, if you wanted to look at your epics and look at them by uh, the different stages, you can do that as well. Um, you see dependents here, blockers. You might want to do some PI planning across these epics. So I'm going to switch over here to PI planning. Uh, here you'll see, I can see right now I have these epics being ran in these different PIs uh, by these different teams. So uh, one of the things you could do is say, well, I'm a little overstacked here for this one. So I'm going to go ahead and give this team here uh, this particular uh, epic as well as uh, this program increment. You can also do road mapping. So if you wanted to come in and do roadmaps by, for example, goals, so I can come in and see my different epics. And uh, by, I can see my different epic timelines. I can see key milestones. 
uh, or delivery dates or release dates uh, by my different goals here. I can switch these goals to be by different portfolios, programs, so I can create all types of roadmaps and I can then print them out here as well. Lastly here you can see I can uh, view a uh, Power BI dashboard that allows me to view all types of reports uh, across Azure DevOps. So not only can you view uh, the particular backlog items and status of backlog items, as I mentioned earlier, you can also view like the health summary of your, your uh, epics. You can view the resource plans, budget details, all right here within uh, Azure DevOps. So now that we have selected the different epics we want to move forward with, the next step within one plan is actually to start on the execution side. So what you'd want to do here is I'm going to go ahead and go back into that particular epic. Here. Now that we're ready to move into execution, we're going to go ahead and go into the grid. And here you'll see within one plan, you can actually create a high level plan. Uh, so that gives you a high level schedule of this particular epic. You can use Microsoft Project Desktop, Microsoft Project for the web uh, to actually manage these schedules here. Uh, you also have the ability to also capture and manage the backlog. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the backlog here and you'll see that this is connected to Azure DevOps and is synchronizing and it's allowing you to see the details on this epic of, of what the backlog looks like. So I'm just kind of expanding it here. and uh, this is where team members could report time against these, report status, so you'll see there's been some updates here. They can collaborate on these particular backlog items. And then lastly here, in this epic, you can provide status reports. So uh, you can set this up on a weekly or a monthly basis, and this will basically set up a time snapshot of these re this status report and allow you to update the narratives, the different status of this particular epic and how things are going. And that all rolls up to um, management for review and statusing. So here's a, just a quick look at one plan with Azure DevOps and how it can extend Azure DevOps into a portfolio management solution.